Good evening and welcome to Wednesday Night Live. It is so good to be with you tonight. We're going to have a great time in the Word of God. Mm -hmm. um, I want to encourage you to get your communion elements ready right now if you can. At the end of uh, our teaching, we're going to have a time of communion together. Uh, but let's go ahead and let's open up in a word of prayer um, and then wait for a few more people to get on. Father, we thank you for tonight. We, thank, we declare that you are good, that your mercies endure forever. Lord, we thank you, Father, for your grace, your divine empowerment to accomplish all that you set before us. Lord, we thank you, Father God, for your anointing that destroys yokes of bondage. Thank you, Father, for your healing anointing in this time. That as Peggy and I speak the word of God, that there is a mighty move of your spirit, of your presence, where people are watching. And I thank you, Father God, for your healing power man manifested in people's lives tonight. In Jesus' name, yes. amen, 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 amen. Well, it is such a good night. Uh, it's good to be with you tonight. Yeah, good to be with you too. Yeah, it's like like we haven't seen each other in a long time. <laughs> and it's good to see all of you tonight. It is. So we encourage you to, if you're on Facebook, please share the video right now. Mm -hmm. um, and then if you're on YouTube, please hit the subscribe button and the thumbs up button if you haven't already done that. Uh, on YouTube, you can... Um, chat with us then also on Facebook you can also chat with us and we encourage that we encourage we like to talk it up we do. Um, I've got my phone right here next to me so I can see what you're saying uh, respond to it if it's the appropriate time and uh, tonight's just gonna be a good night because every night with God is a good night That's right and every night we jump into the Word of God is a good night and is a healing night. Amen. Amen. Uh, we're just going to look this evening in the subject of healing. And we're going to cover three points. And But I, I just have an expectation in my heart, we do, um, that the Lord just wants to connect some dots this evening. And sometimes when we've heard something, either we can let it down, either we haven't had real understanding of, of a subject. And I just believe that God is gonna connect dots for you tonight. It may be in something that we say, or it may be in something that he says to you behind the scenes. And so I just want you to just be listening in. We just believe that his word, it's not gonna return void, but That's it right. is gonna go forth to accomplish healing in your life. And so we're going to just share that this evening. So we're going to go through three points. And I'm just going to go through those three <clears throat> points. And then we're going to get into the word. Okay. Yep. So the first one is focus on the cross or the finished work of Jesus. Yes. And so our focus is important. Number one. Number two, follow his instruction for you. And number three, receive with thanksgiving and so we're yeah. just going to unpack those things for you to for you this evening we're going to begin in john chapter 3 and this is verses 14 through 16 and i'm going to read that so just as moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness so the son of man must be lifted up that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him and so we're going to ask a question. The, um, in John, it says, just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness. Well, I think we need to ask a question. What is significant about this snake in the wilderness? And so we're going to go to the Old Testament now, and we're going to answer that question. That's right. Numbers 21, verse 8. Numbers 21, 8. It says, then the Lord told him, make a replica of a poisonous snake and attach it to a pole. All who are bitten will live if, it, if they simply look at it. So Moses made a snake out of bronze and attached it to a pole. Then anyone who was bitten by a snake could look at the bronze snake and be healed. 
So I want to just kind of bring out a couple of points here before Pastor Peggy jumps into her points. Notice that God instructs Moses to make a replica of a poisonous snake. Not just a snake, but a poisonous snake. The reason for that is if you get bit by a regular snake, a garden, garden snake, um, it may hurt. There may be a couple of puncture marks, but in essence, it's done. But if you're bit by a poisonous snake, it makes a major difference. And so um, the poisonous aspect of it is the word of God tells us that uh, that Jesus took, he did not take on sin. He became sin for us. So he was full of poison. He was full of all of the stuff, all of the hurts, all of, you know, sometimes when someone does you wrong, it hurts like a poison. It stings. There, there is a residue that is in your system for a long period of time or a short period of time. Yeah. But it's not like just being bitten and gone. It's bitten and it works through. Mm. So God sp specifically tells Moses, do it out of, a, make a replica of a poisonous snake. Mm. All right, That's so. Good. That's good. Um, so, guys, we see in this situation that the children of Israel, they began to murmur. The, so we're going to kind of give just a little bit of the backstory. Yeah. They began to murmur, and the word says against God and against Moses. And I want to, something that I'm so grateful for people who teach God's word is sometimes there's details that we don't think about when we just read the Bible. But in this particular thing, it says that poisonous snakes came into the camp. Yeah. But those poisonous poisonous snakes are in a are in the desert. That's right. They're there all the time. It's not that poisonous snakes weren't present, yeah. but it's that God's covering was around the children of Israel, keeping those snakes out of their camp. Yeah. So so the snakes and another another way of saying it is the snakes could not come in because of what they were doing. But when they started to murmur, when they started to complain against God, yeah. when they sp started to complain against the leader that God had put in position, then it's, then the snakes had the ability to enter in. It's almost like there was an invisible barrier. Yes. And that barrier was removed and those snakes now had entrance into yeah. the camp. And the Bible says that those snakes began to bite people in the children of Israel and people just began to fall dead. Well, the children of Israel got things right really quick. <laughs> and the Bible says they came to Moses and they said, we've sinned against God and we've sinned against you. Pray to yeah. God on our behalf. And, yeah. and God gave specific instructions. And it's so interesting, the instructions that God gave. He said, put a poison, make a bronze, a a bronze serpent of a po or a bronze image yeah. of a poisonous snake, put it on a pole, and that thing had to have been high. I never yeah. actually thought about that. Yeah. But it had to have been high because there's millions of people out there. That's right. So that thing has to be elevated and that thing has to have some dimension to yeah, it. Yeah, it is huge. I never thought about that. Yeah. And but for everybody to see, and the Bible said as long as you look on this bronze snake you'll be protected. That's right. And so the first thing that we want, that we feel like the Lord is wanting us to bring out is our focus is so important. Yeah. And for us to focus on the cross and on the finished work of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I love the way that it's put, it's a finished work. Yeah. And so we're not looking at a work that needs to be done. We're looking at a work that's already been accomplished. Yeah. And we're just receiving the benefit from that. Yeah. And so the first thing that we just want to bring out with that is your attention on the cross keeps your faith activated. Yeah. And so it's almost like, you know, if you think about it, if you're focusing on something and then something distracts you away, when you get distracted away, it, it, re, um, it disconnects your faith. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Your faith is the connector to the healing that you're desiring. And so your focus is super important. Yeah. 
So that, that really mm -hmm. even applies to, um, we've been talking about health, walking in health in 2021. We've been talking about uh, church health. Uh, how can we have a church that has a culture of health? So in our modern vernacular, uh, gossip would be what the children of Israel were doing. They were murmuring. That's gossip. Um, they were offended. So offense. And they were spreading offense. Um, they were being divisive. Some of them were, were trying to divide other people from the leader, uh, from God, through their conversation. Now, I don't think that it was anyone's intention to actually divide someone away from God. But what happened was they got their focus off of God. And here, this is telling us, keep your eyes on the cross or keep your eyes on Jesus because when you keep your eyes on Jesus your faith is activated and stays activated but when you're gossiping when you're when you're being divisive when you're you know murmuring in the back areas you know whatever that looks like what that does is it it deactivates your faith mm -hmm. It, de it, it, it contaminates. Mm -hmm. So you've got to get your eyes back on Jesus. And it's important that, that you, um, it's important that you make sure that the environment that you are in keeps your faith active. That's good. So that's why the word of God talks about the fact, don't hang out with gossips. Don't gossip. Um, it talks about the fact that offense defiles many. That, you know, we don't want to go down that road because what it does is it deactivates our ability to receive from God in the fullness that God has got for us. And healing is definitely one of those areas. Amen. Amen. Another area that we can look at that can distract us is pain can distract. Yeah. Symptoms can distract. And that's a real thing. And I was talking to someone today and it just, it, or actually yesterday about healing. And she was in a service and God led the minister to say something like this. God understands your pain yeah. and he understands that it's difficult when you're in pain. Pain has a voice. Yeah. Symptoms have a voice. But one thing is, so we're going to read a couple of scriptures about that and talk how to refocus in the midst of that. Yeah, yeah. And so this is so powerful because this is real. Yeah, yeah. Okay? Um, we're going to look at Isaiah 53, 3, and we're just going to read the, the first half of the verse because it applies. It's speaking of Jesus, and it's speaking of his days on the earth, and then also when he was on the cross. Yeah. And basically it says he was despised and he was rejected. I... Isn't God good? I just got something when I'm when I'm reading this. He wasn't just rejected by man. The word says in my version, he was rejected by mankind. That's right. He knows what it's like not just to be rejected, but to be rejected by everyone. Yeah. I've never caught that. Yeah. Did you did you know? Um, I I heard this the other day talking about the closer you get to the cross, the less people that will be with you. Wow. Um, Jesus had 5,000 plus when he was feeding everyone. Mm -hmm. Then that 5,000 went down to 500. Then when he talked about actual communion that was going to happen, he said, you're going to eat my flesh. You're going to drink my blood. They didn't quite understand that. It went from that large crowd down to just the 12. Yeah, that's true. And the, and the 12 said, uh, we don't have anywhere else to go, indicating they probably would have went if they had had a place to go. But then when we get to uh, the cross, there was only one that was at the cross with Jesus. So we see Mary, Mary Magdalene, or Mary the mother of Jesus, Mary Magdalene, and we see John. That was it. The other 11 were gone. And so um, 
Jesus understands when everyone bails on you. He has felt that before. Maybe you're standing for healing and maybe you've made a strong stand. I'm going to be healed in this year. And you told people and they just kind of dismissed you. They're like, whatever. Uh, you know, that's always been in our family. It's always going to be in our family. Who do you think you are? You think you're better than all the rest of us? And sometimes that it can feel like um, a, a those poisonous bites. Jesus understood that and he understood your pains. That's right. That's right. So again, we kind of stopped mid verse, but we're going to, we'll start back in the beginning mm -hmm. of the verse. He was despised and he was rejected by mankind. He was a man of suffering and he was familiar with pain. Yeah. And so it says Jesus was familiar. It wasn't just something that he experienced once. It's, and we know that on the cross, the Bible literally says he became sick for us. He, so he didn't just take our sickness, he became sick. That's right. He, sickness became a part of his That's being right. because he was bearing that sacrifice. Yeah. But I love the way the word says it. He was familiar with pain. And so I just want to encourage you that he understands when you're dealing with pain and dealing with it on a constant basis. Yeah. There's one other scripture that we want to look at, and that's found in Hebrews 2, and this is verse 17. And it says, therefore, it was necessary for him, and this is speaking about Jesus, to be made in every respect like us, his brothers and sisters, so that he could be our merciful and faithful high priest before God. Mm. And so you also look at this. Jesus literally became just like you, just like me. And he didn't just live everything that all ever experienced. He lived everything you will ever experience and everything you will ever experience. Right. So you think about the multiplication of that. Jesus didn't just live one person's life. He didn't just live a token life. He literally, he literally encountered every, I don't get this, man. It's, it's heavy when you yeah. think of it. He encountered everything that any and everyone would ever encounter. Yeah. The word of God tells us in Isaiah chapter 53 that um, he was unrecognizable. Uh, I'm sure that that had to do with the fact that he had been whipped before he got to the cross. The Romans were brutal and how they would torture someone. But I don't think that that is all of it. I, I honestly believe that all of the stuff that, that he took on, all the weights, all of the, just the, the being swollen and all those kinds of, he took on all of that stuff. And it says that he was unrecognizable. Yeah, yeah. And so when we look back at that scripture in Hebrews chapter 2, it says that he, um, because he encountered everything that mm -hmm. any of us would ever encounter, it says he is able to be merciful. Yeah. And so I want you to even think about this. When you experience a hardship in your life that really touches you to the core, from that point on, you become more aware of those who are experiencing the same thing that you have been. Yeah. You become more, you're empathetic. open, empathetic. Yeah. yeah. Empathy. And, and so the whole thing is Jesus can be a merciful high priest to you, but not just merciful, he is faithful. And so it's not just that he gets it, it's that he's the answer to it. Yeah. And so we just want to encourage you, first of all, that's the first point focus on the cross, focus on the finished work of Jesus, just focus on Jesus. Yeah. And there's something about keeping your focus on that, keeping your focus. And if you find that you've been di dis distracted, just say, Lord, help me to get my focus back in on you. That's right. So um, praise God. The second thing that we want you to look at is follow his instruction for you. Mm -hmm. And this is something that sometimes, again, people fail to, to see that God can give us specific instruction. That's right that by following that instruction, it can connect us again to our 
personal answer. Yeah. And so there's examples, and we're not going to go to particular scriptures, but I'm going to go to examples that were in the scripture. There was a paralyzed man, and he was at a pool of Bethesda. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said to him, pick up your bed and walk. Jesus gave him specific instructions. Mm -hmm. And then there was a man with a crippled hand. Jesus said, stretch out your hand. There was a man, he was a um, he was a, a Jewish synagogue ruler. His name was J. Iris, and his daughter was very ill. And while Jesus was going with him on en route to his house, the Bible says that news came to Jairus that his daughter had died. And Jesus' instructions to Jairus was, don't be afraid, just believe. That's right. And so we see in these three separate examples, Jesus gave three separate instructions that I believe that if they would not have been followed, people would not have received their healing. That's right. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so I just have a question for you today. What is God saying to you? Is he telling you to rest? Is he telling you to get out and be more active, to exercise? Is he telling you to stretch? Is he telling you to cut out certain kinds of foods? Um, are you aware that when you eat certain kinds of foods, it affects you? And it's just, what is God saying to you? And whatever he's saying to you, then follow it. Because again, that's a connector. God's given you his spirit to give you an idea of what to do with your body. The Bible says in Psalms that we're fearfully and we're wonderfully made. Therefore, God knows everything about your system. He knows yeah. everything about what's going on in your system. And so our encouragement is don't just focus in on Jesus, but follow what he's speaking to you specifically, personally. That's right. So that, that, would, that would mean that we need to listen to God, spend a little bit of time praying and talking with God, hearing that inward witness. Uh, when we talk about hearing God, you know, what God's speaking to us, um, I have never had it where um, it was like speakers in the room. Uh, I've never had that kind of thing. Now, I know of, of individuals that they have had that. Mm -hmm. that they, not they, many, though. Huh? Not many. Some that, you know, they said that they thought someone was talking in the back seat and they turned around and, and said, who said that? How God speaks to me is oftentimes it's just an inward prompting. Just cut out this. And if I'll, if, I'll, if I'll follow that, then I can prove that out. Mm -hmm. And how we learn to be confident in that inner voice is when God gives us, when we hear that inner voice, if we do it and it's successful, then we can start to build our confidence, our faith in that inner voice. Mm -hmm. Then when he speaks to us to do something of a bigger nature, we have the ability to do it promptly because we have developed hearing his voice. That's good. Okay. That's good. One other thing I just want to bring out that I have on my notes is God may say to you, go to the doctor. Yep. It's, it's not a lack of faith by going to the doctor and finding out what's going on. Yeah. Because sometimes that helps us pinpoint where to put our faith as well or That's what right. adjustments to make. And so it's not a lack of faith to go to a doctor. It's not a lack of faith to... Um, Take prescribed medicines and apply your faith to those medicines. Do do what do what you can do, and God will do what he what only he can do. That's right. So that's right. So the first thing is focus your attention on the cross or the finished work of Jesus. The second is follow his instruction for you, and the third is just simple. It's receive with thanksgiving. Yes. And there's such a great story that gives this as an example. But first of all, I just want to, if, if you gave me something, my husband's a giver. Yep. And um, I am too. <laughs> um, but my husband's a giver and he surprises me with things. Well, the right thing to do when my husband gives me something is to say thank you. Yep. And to truly stop and go, man, I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful that he gave me something. Mm -hmm. Well, sometimes... I think God, I know, I don't just think, I know God wants us to foster a spirit of thanksgiving. 
And there's a great example. There was a woman, her name was um, Lillian B. Yeomans. Mm -hmm. And she used to be a medical doctor. And I, I believe she lived back in the early 1920s. Does that yes. sound right to you? Mm -hmm. And she contracted cancer and she became very ill. And so she had to stop her practice. And so, um, get, and correct me, I think I have this story right. So correct me if I get it off. But basically Lillian was praying about her healing and she was a believer and just kind of leaning into that. And she had, um, the Lord just showed her kind of like a scale. Do you remember those old scales mm -hmm. where you could put something on one side and the other side would go up? The Lord showed her that prayer was on one side and Thanksgiving was on the other. Yes. And prayer was really low because she there was weight on it. Yeah. So she had been praying a lot, but he told her, he said, make your thanksgiving equal to your prayer. Yeah. And she had, again, received the personal instruction that God had given her to just up her thanksgiving. Don't be so concerned about her praying about it. Again, we know being in God's word causes that confidence and that faith to be in us but then attaching Thanksgiving to that. Mm -hmm. And so she started doing that. And so instead of praying about it, instead of worrying about it, she just started lifting up her hands and the hours that she was awake and she would just say, Father, I just thank you that I'm whole. Father, I just thank you that I'm cancer free. I thank you for Jesus that he bore the price for me so that I no longer have to bear this price in my body. That's right. And the Bible says again, the Lord showed her, he goes, and he showed her that same scale and they were even. She had lifted up her Thanksgiving and at that moment she received her healing. That's right. And so there is there is actually key to mm -hmm. our Thanksgiving because yeah. again, Thanksgiving is a connector. Correct. Just like focus is a connector, just like personal obedience is a connector. Thanksgiving is a connector to the reception of your gift. Yeah. And that's what he was. So is. the 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 deeper aspect of that Thanksgiving is Jesus has already paid the price. When we look in 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 24, mm -hmm. when we look in Isaiah 53 4 5, both of those two verses are connected. Really, Peter is quoting Isaiah. Um, we see that it says, by Jesus' stripes, we are whole. We have been made whole. Healing is already a finished work on the cross. So when we pray, dear God, heal me, what we're saying is, God, do something for me but the reality is God has already done something for us. So when we go into Thanksgiving, which is a different kind of prayer, mm, that's good. it's a different form of prayer, that it, it is thanking God for the answer that has already happened. So when you go into Thanksgiving and you spend a lot of time in Thanksgiving, what you're saying is yes, I have applied it to my life. God has done it through Jesus' finished work. Hallelujah. I, re I receive. It's, it's mine, mine and I take it now. So Thanksgiving is a huge aspect for us. Not just for the, the part of thanking, uh, thanking God for the gift of healing, but thanking him that he has already healed us. And by that Thanksgiving, we, we, we're appropriating. That's a, it's a big word, but we're appropriate. We're taking it on. We're, we're saying it is real in me. Mm -hmm. What Jesus did on the cross is real in me. Which then that kind of, that leads us into communion. So if you've got your Bibles, let's go ahead and let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And we're going to start in verse 23. 1 Corinthians 11, verse 23. It says, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. 
And when he had broke, when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Notice here, and I, I don't know that I've actually noticed this before, but notice that Jesus demonstrates how to do it. He gave thanks. He gave thanks. Then he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So when we're partaking of the bread, we, we, we break it, de demonstrating that Jesus' body was broken. But we do it with thanks. The remembrance part should be in thanksgiving. Now it is, it is a sacred time. It is a holy time. But it is also a rejoicing time because we are once again remembering. And sometimes we can kind of slip. We can kind of let the, the truth slip from us that by Jesus' stripes we are whole. But when we partake of communion, we're saying, oh, I remember once again. I remember. I'm reminded. And I give thanks for what Jesus has done for me. And honey, something that just came to my mind is you may not be even experiencing sickness in your body, but giving of thanks is like a health plan. Correct. Giving of thanks is like a is like preventative care. Yeah, like vitamins. Mm -hmm. So it's not just something that we do when we're sick. It's something we do when we're not ailing. That's right. That's right. Then in verse 25, it says, In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner, will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. In other words, when we forget what he's done for us, um, we want to make sure that we don't take it, partake of the elements religiously. Mm -hmm. There have been times I've, I've partaken the, of the elements religiously. In other words, it's just a point in the service, and I'm like, mm -hmm. I need to get this done so I can go on to the next part of the service. That's doing it in a wrong way. There needs to be, even if it's a short amount of time, there needs to be an understanding. This is a point of contact. This is something we do outwardly so that other people can see that we stand with Jesus and the covenant that we have in him. We believe that God raised Jesus from the dead and that Jesus is Lord, and we are saved. That's why we do. That's why we do communion at least once a month. Sometimes we start off the year doing it six or seven weeks at a time. It's just to reestablish, reestablish that God has done a great work, a finished work in Jesus Christ. Amen. So if you've got your elements. Let's partake, let's take the bread. Father, we thank you for the broken body of Jesus. Lord, we partake of healing in our bodies right now. I thank you, Father God, that as we're partaking, and if people, if, if people don't have the elements, Lord, uh, me partaking on their behalf. We're remembering that the broken body of Jesus, his whole body is transferred to us. Our broken body is transferred to him. And we receive of the fullness of healing and health in our physical bodies, and in our emotions. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's partake of the bread. Mm -hmm. 
Jesus spilled his blood. They did not take it from him. He chose to be the lamb. He is the ultimate lamb. The lambs of the Old Testament covered the sins. But the lamb of the Lord washes away sins. Therefore, it is remembered no more or accounted no more to your record. So in other words, like those scales, you have one scale with all your sins, another scale with Jesus. When Jesus died on the cross and his blood was spilled, it was like, boom! Be and if, if you've ever done it, I've done it before as a kid. With you put the you put a right amount of weight on it, and then it like zooms up, and then all of the other weights fall off. Sin is remembered no more because of what Jesus did through His blood. You want to pray over the cup? Sure. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for the blood of Jesus that he willingly spilled. Father, we thank you that his blood, Father, brings us into right relationship with you, that no longer are we separated, but we are brought near. We are literally um, adopted as your children when we receive you. And so, Lord, we just thank you for that right relationship. We thank you for confidence when we come into your presence, Lord. We thank you that you're our Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's partake of the cup. Praise the Lord. Amen. Father, right now, we thank you for your healing power that is working in our bodies working on our bodies. We are thankful, Lord, for the, for the blood of Jesus that washes away sins. I thank you that when Satan tries to have accusation against me, God, you see the covering of the blood of Jesus over my life. Yes. And you say, nope, Satan, there's nothing to accuse for because it's all been taken care of. Jesus, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We receive healing right now in Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus, I release the healing power of God into every body that is watching, whether they're whole or whether they're sick. And I thank you, Father God, that there is a strengthening, like Ephesians 6, 10 says, that we are strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. So I thank you, Father God, for a strengthening, for a, um, just a, a reviving that is happening in people's bodies, their minds, their emotions. And we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. Because it, it is no one but Jesus who saves and sets free. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Hallelujah. So if you've experienced physical healing in your body while we've been on, I want you just in the comments area to just say, hey, uh, was suffering from a migraine, yeah. migraine's gone. Testify. Yeah, testify. Let's let's have some praise reports. Let's have some thanksgiving of the goodness of God. Yeah. I know I'm feeling more uh, strengthened, I encouraged. Am too. <laughs> yeah. We we were having some symptoms today. Yeah, right? we were we were dragging a little bit, but we're doing <laughs> better now. now. Amen. So Amen. Uh, again, we want to encourage you to come be with us on Sunday mornings, 10 a.m. Uh, live in our sanctuary. If you're not quite ready to be live in sanctuary, then join us online on either Facebook or YouTube. Mm -hmm. But we really encourage you to come on, hang out with us. Yeah. We got plenty of chairs, got plenty of distance in between the chairs. We're doing all the right things to yeah. keep everybody as safe as possible. Mm -hmm. 
So come on, hang with us. All of this week, I've been talking about having health in your finances. Okay. Then next week, I'm going to spend the entire week talking about physical healing and keys to physical healing. There are some keys. There are some things that will kind of slow up the healing process. And there are things that will make it more rapid. Amen. So join, definitely join with us on these um, 10 at 10s. Mm -hmm. And it's, we're just going to have a good time. Yeah. If you'd like to give, there's a link at the bottom on Facebook to give. Uh, you can go to lightthebay.com. There'll be a donate button. Uh, if you want to text it in, 84321, then type in the amount, hit the send button. Uh, there's multiple ways. You can even mail it in if you're still doing cash or check. We like to do electronic. But if you're still doing cash and check, then you can mail it in to Light the Bay Church, 1210 Stoneman Avenue, Pittsburgh, California, 94565. And I encourage you, all of those of you that are watching online, um, that you're new to our church, join with us in getting the good news out to people. Join with us by giving. It helps us get the news out. God bless and have a great night.